again with device gate, and I think show and tell is always the best way to do a rapid fire presentation. So what I'd like to do is show you our network in San Francisco, uh, and this is actually the usage that happens between midnight and 1 a.m. What we do is curate and automate all the world's Wi-Fi. We look specifically at amenity Wi-Fi, which is really the biggest untapped market. Look what happens after 24 hours on our network. After 24 hours, you see 100,000 connections just in the city of San Francisco with the customers that we have today. What about New York? So here's New York from 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. It's the first hour of the day. You can see the residential parts are starting to be used. People are starting to connect to Wi-Fi. They're starting to make connections. After 24 hours, it looks like a blizzard hit New York. What you see is the Hudson River that is going down the middle there, and you see Central Park, a little rectangle with the net sort of sticking out there because it has Wi-Fi. So you can see all the people that are using Wi-Fi, one million connections today on our network, just in New York City. How does this work? We have software on the handset that is doing machine learning, and it's doing crowdsourcing, and it's communicating with the server. And what that's doing is it's building a curated virtual network, which is today 16 million hotspots, out of a total of 250 hotspots that we're monitoring worldwide. The goal is to keep people always best connected. We want to keep people on 4G, on 3G, on carrier Wi-Fi, on small cell, on amenity Wi-Fi. We're measuring all these networks in real time at the same time, and we're putting people on the best network. So you can do this based on policy. Now let's look at the network itself. How big is the network itself? Here's San Francisco again. A typical cellular deployment in San Francisco is about 100 or 200 macro cells. After some time, as smartphones start to process more traffic, what happens is it gets congested. A carrier has to put in more gear. They need to put in uh, more base stations, whatever it happens to be. Suppose they put in small cells. Suppose they put in carrier small cells or just femto cells. That will solve the problem temporarily, but then traffic will continue to grow. What then happens is it gets congested again, and you have to put in more gear. What about if you can tap into amenity Wi-Fi? We have 27,000 quality controlled hotspots just in San Francisco alone. That's two orders of magnitude larger than what is deployed in the cellular context. So there's capacity in every nook and cranny in the network you can think of. Capacity where you need it, when you need it. We're expanding into Europe. This is our footprint already in five different European cities. You can see it's growing as we get customers. We're next moving into Latin America and Asia as well as we sign up customers because it all happens through a crowdsourcing mechanism. So when the customers come and deploy the devices, that's how the hotspots get into the network. We're on track to hit 100 million in five years. We are today at 16 million, right on track. You can see how it's grown over the last couple of years. Pract practically doubling each year based on the number of customers that we're signing up. We have what's called a venue Wi-Fi experience manager. This is how we engage with venue owners. We engage through technology and services. So the way we engage with them is giving them a dashboard that tells them the quality of their Wi-Fi. We also allow them to share their password over the portal, which gets distributed through the handsets. And finally, we allow them to engage with the folks in their shop. With the people in the shop, they can send passive notifications. And they can get more usage out of their Wi-Fi, which gives them an incentive to keep it high quality. We also are sitting on a lot of data because we have such a large network. This is a study we did where we compared activity with usage. And what we found was that people that use Wi-Fi the most or people that use Wi-Fi the least, those people also use cellular the least, which is a bit counterintuitive. But all those people in the middle that are using lots of healthy Wi-Fi are also using lots of healthy cellular. You can target different segments to either drop data or increase data, depending upon what you're trying to do in terms of growing our code. And these are our customers. These are the networks that we've deployed so far and the customers that we have. And we just actually announced a relationship with CCA, which is going to allow us to, to work with more of the regional providers. And we also signed a deal just yesterday. Uh, and we're already deployed on Leap Wireless, uh, which runs under the Cricket brand. So thank you very much. Questions for David. Thank you, guys. So what's the, um, the proposition for carriers that would already have a Wi-Fi infrastructure before? Um, is it a 
complement? Is it a roaming improvement proposition? It is both. It, it is a complement because if you think about it, all the places like let's use some brands in the U.S. You know, Home Depot, Target, Walmart, these kinds of places. It's difficult for a carrier to deploy networks in those kinds of places. So you want the consumer to be attached to those particular networks, right? So it's very complementary in the sense that it's very much an indoor presence and it's very much associated with all the places that are hard to get. Um, so that's the that, that's the key to it being a complementary. We can also take in all the various Wi-Fi networks. It's not just the ones that we have. So we can manage your Wi-Fi with real-time QoE just as much as we're managing the amenity Wi-Fi. So I think you've been around since 2000, is that right? Yes. So what do you like this fantasy? So uh, the company was working primarily on uh, developing Wi-Fi middleware and security systems and so forth for a lot of devices getting them connected to the internet. And it was about four or five years ago that we started this concept of a curated virtual network. Um, and so, as you can see, the customers have been uh, growing over the last couple of years. We've been signing up a number of customers. What we're worried about right now is building the world's largest and most effective Wi-Fi access platform and connecting as many carriers as we possibly can. So we just want to continue building a better product and continue elevating the always best connected experience. How do you handle quality of the hotspots? Great. Um, so first of all, we do real-time monitoring of the quality. So the handset is measuring the quality in real time. It's sending all that information back up into the server. And the server is looking at trends and making predictions about quality over time. Um, you find the quality changes a lot throughout the day. So the best way to do it is real-time measurements. Um, so that's the key, is real-time measurement not only of Wi-Fi, but also of cellular. But we also have this Wi-Fi experience manager for the venue owner that gives them uh, insight into their Wi-Fi as well. That works especially well for the long tail venues, um, and it allows them to see how their Wi-Fi ranks against others in the industry. So there's numerous ways that we're addressing quality. That's it. That's we're out of time. Thank you very much, David. All right.